So just as a kind of a quick recap overview of the finished product and with an eye towards what we're going to be doing new today, we have in our finished product, we have our game controller, which has the game controller script, text input, room navigation, and item script. It's actually called usable items here. I changed it to interactable items uh, in, the, in the training that we're going to do, so don't be confused by that. We have a series of input actions, which are scriptable objects, right? We've already created Go. We also have examine, inventory, take, and use that we're going to make today. We have scripts for those. We have the item type of scriptable object, so or interactable object as we're calling it. So this contains a noun, a description, and then a series of interactions, right? Some of these just display a text response. The take action will display a text response and move things in and out of the inventory. And then the use action has a second type of scriptable object, which is an action response, which in this case is gonna change rooms. And so we're gonna set all of this up today. Now, just as a kind of a refresher on what we did in our last session, we created the following scripts, right? The whole training is script-based, so everything that we're working with is a, a script or a scriptable object. So we created the room scriptable object class that holds a description of the room and a set of exits. We created the exit class, which is a serialized data class, which holds a description of the exit and a reference to the room that we will go to when we go through the exit. We created the room navigation script, which is a mono behavior attached to the game controller object, which holds a reference to the current room and loads and unloads rooms as we move between them. We created the game controller, which manages all the subsystems of the game and the action log, which is a list of strings, which contains everything that has happened so far. We created the text input script, which takes input from the player, displays it, and calls input actions. So far, our text input was just calling the go input action, but we're going to expand on that system today. And then we created the input action type, which is a scriptable object, which holds code to execute when an action is needed. And we made the go action, which allows us to change rooms. So I'd like to just kind of give a abstract overview of the architecture that we're building here, right? Just so you can maybe visualize it a little bit better before we dive into creating some additional content. So at the top level of our hierarchy, we have rooms, right? So a room contains a description of the room. It contains an array of exits. And then it also contains an array of items or interactable objects, right? So in our example here, our room contains the skull, altar, and orb. Then over here, we have the skull, which is a one of the items that could be in a room, right? The skull is an interactable object. It contains some data as well, a description of the item that's going to be displayed when we come into the room, and then the noun, which we're going to refer to it by. And then it also contains an array of interactions, including examine, take, and use. And these are input actions, right, which are scriptable objects which execute code. Then we have, at the bottom of the hierarchy, the, a single examine interaction, which contains an input action scriptable object, an item description, or a text response, right? Item description is not the best text there. It's really a text response for when the action happens. And then potentially, but not necessarily, an action response, which is going to do something in our game based on whether or not there, an action response is present. Okay. So that's kind of the overview of what has come before, what we're going to do today, the general architecture of the project, the systems that we're going to focus on being the item system and the inventory system. And so the next step is that we are going to create our script for our interactable object, and we're going to use that to display descriptions of objects in the room.